welcome back to the decision tree module let's get our hands dirty and learn how to build decision tree models in python so first we'll import the required libraries pandas numpy and matplotlib here so let me just go ahead and do that and this line here person matplotlib inline ensures that the graphs that we'll be plotting later are displayed in this jupyter notebook itself we'll be working on the titanic data set which we've already seen while implementing logistic regression here we'll be using a clean data set it does not have any missing values all categorical variables have been converted to numerical using the one hot encoding as the sklearn models only take numerical inputs we've discussed this before as well you can download the clean data set using the link we've provided below this video so here i've read the data using the read underscore csv function of pandas and let's now look at the shape of the data most of us are already familiar with this we have 891 observations and 25 columns of variables to look at the variables let's print the first five rows of the data using the dot head function and here we go remember we used one hot encoding i've mentioned this that's why we have so many variables here in this problem survived the first column here is the target variable where zero means that the passenger on board the titanic did not survive while one means that the passenger did survive and you can see that all features are converted to numbers as well let's check if there are any missing values in the data we've already cleaned the data set but it doesn't hurt to just verify that we've used the dot is null dot sum function here which returns the number of missing values in each variable and as you can see here it's perfect there are no missing values you can also see that encoded variables like p class underscore one p class underscore two and so on are in this data set now do you recall that to build any model using sklearn we have to specifically define the target variable and all the independent variables for this titanic problem the target variable is survived which we'll store in a variable called y and to store all the other variables as independent variables i have done that in a variable called x i've dropped the survived column here from the data since we've already stored it in y here all right let me go ahead and run this now to validate how a model will perform on unseen data we need to create a validation set again like we've discussed before now to create this validation set we will use the train test split function of sklearn's model selection module so i'm going to go ahead and import that all right perfect here i've called the train test split function setting random state as 101 will make sure that every time you run this code you will get the same observations in the train and validation set stratify is equal to y will make the similar distribution of classes in both training and validation set and i've given the test size as 0 0.25 which means that the training data set x underscore train will contain 75 percent of data whereas the test will contain 0 0.25 which means the training data set which is x underscore train here will contain 75 percent of the data while validation will contain 25 percent let's verify the distribution of classes in both training and validation set the value counts function which i've just implemented here value underscore counts returns the count of all classes and normalize is equal to true here will return the percentage so in the training set around 61.67 percent are zeros and 38.3 percent are ones similarly let's check the distribution in the validation set as you can see it's almost similar around 61 percent are zeros and 38 percent are ones so using the stratify is equal to y we can make the distribution of classes similar in both train and validation set let's check the shape of the train and validation set as well so there are 668 observations in a training set and 223 in the validation set all right now let's build the decision tree model here i'm not focusing on creating different types of features and building best models instead i want to explain how to build a decision tree model and change the parameter to have different models post looking at the model results remember this is a classification problem where we have to predict whether a passenger on board the titanic will survive or will not survive that's why we'll use the decision tree classifier let me import it from the tree module of sklearn 
had it been a regression problem instead we would have used the decision tree regressor and you can import it like this i'm going to go ahead and do this even though it's not relevant for our problem just to give you an idea we'll now call the decision tree classifier model and save it as a dt underscore model again we're using random state it ensures that every time we run this particular model we will get the same result here i've said random state is 10 you can choose any integer value here as you see fit so i'm going to go ahead and run that let's now fit the decision tree classifier we'll use the dot fit function and pass the x underscore train and y underscore train which remember are the independent variables and the target variable respectively for the training set here you can see that the default criterion of a decision tree classifier is genie you can change it to chi square as well like we discussed in the previous videos we've also seen things like max depth max features etc so these are all set to default here since you have not played around with them let's now check the performance of the train model first on the training set and then on the validation set here the dot score function as you can see here will return the accuracy of the model wow a model is 98% accurate on the training set perfect but wait let's check the performance on the validation set before we get excited it's dropped down to 75% you can see that the training and the validation accuracy are not in sync training accuracy is very very high and the validation accuracy has dipped as compared to the training accuracy now we can use the predict function which will predict whether a passenger survived or not on the validation set x underscore valid as i've passed here so let me just do that here we've made predictions for all the observations in the validation set apart from predicting the class we can also predict probability for both classes 0 and 1 using the predict underscore prob a function so i'm going to go ahead and run that here we go so what do you think this is here the first column this one is for class 0 and this one is showing the probability for class 1 i can also use different thresholds to decide the class of observation when we use the predict function it takes 0 0.5 as a default threshold so let me just play around with the threshold and see if we can get the accuracy up so what i'll do is i'll take the first column here predicting the probability is a 1 so let me go and do that and i'll save it in a variable we'll call y underscore pred all right now i'll set the threshold to 0 0.6 remember it was 0 0.5 previously as it was a default one so let's see what happens when we take a threshold of 0 0.6 so when i say 0 0.6 i mean any probability less than 0 0.6 will go into 0 and any probability more than 0 0.6 will be taken as 1 so let me go ahead and run this for loop let's import the accuracy underscore score metric and check the new accuracy it's actually coming out to be pretty much the same this is just to show how you can change the threshold it's not always necessary that after changing the threshold the accuracy will increase in some cases that accuracy might decrease as well so so far we've seen that the training and validation accuracy are not in sync in the previous video we saw many parameters that can be used to optimize the performance of decision trees we saw those default parameters here as well so let's use some of those parameters and try to optimize the performance of our decision tree let's look at the max depth parameter if you recall it tells us the length of the longest path of the tree here i've taken the range of max depth from 1 to 10 so we will train the decision tree model 10 times and change the parameter max depth from 1 to 10 for each model we will store the training accuracy and the validation accuracy in the empty list which i have defined here so let's run this and store the values now let's create a data frame from the values which we got in the previous cell so let me do that and print out the first five rows of this data frame here we go you can see that we have the training and validation accuracies corresponding to a set of range of max depth let me plot these values here and this is the plot we get as you can see that when we had a max depth of one both the training as well as the validation accuracies were less so keeping a lower value of max depth did not allow the model to learn the patterns and hence we got very low performance or you can say that it is a case of underfitting as the max step now keeps on increasing 
both the training and validation accuracies are increasing as well. The magnitude of increase in training accuracy is higher as compared to the magnitude of increase in the validation accuracy. In this particular case, when we look at the max depth of 8, it is producing the highest validation accuracy and hence we can set the max depth as 8. It drops off the board here, so yeah, that is why we are taking 8. Similar to what I have done here, you can try with different parameters as well and I strongly recommend you to find the optimum value of other parameters like max leaf nodes, minimum sample split, min samples leaf, etc. So here I have found out the optimum value for an individual parameter. You can try it with a combination of parameters as well. You can use multiple for loops and then try to find the best combination of parameters. There is actually one more technique that automatically does this for us which is grid search. It helps us to find the optimum value for a combination of parameters. And don't worry, we will discuss more about this technique later in the course. For now, I suggest you find the optimum value of parameters on your own. It's a great learning exercise. Let's use the max depth of 8 and max leaf node as 25 here and train the decision tree model again. Let's see what happens. Remember random state will make sure that we get the same result every time we run this code. So I'm going to go in and run this. Let's now fit the model by passing the x underscore train and y underscore train which are the independent and dependent variables respectively for the training set. Let's now check the score on the training and the validation set. So we get a training accuracy of around 88%. Let's see what we have in the validation accuracy. Alright, we have 81%. Now we can say that the training and validation accuracies are more in sync as compared to what we got in the beginning. Previously, the training accuracy was 98.8% and validation accuracy was 75%. And hence, they were not exactly in sync. But when we look at these two accuracies now, they are far more in sync and we can say that the model we've just created is a more generalized model. You can play around with different parameters and then choose the one which gives you the best result. As I've discussed in the beginning of this module, I will show you how to plot a decision tree. So let's get to it now. Let's plot this tree that we've just recently trained. So to do that, we'll have to import the tree module from sklearn library which will help us to plot the tree. Now, you'll need to install the GraphWiz library first. I already have this on my system, so I will skip this step. But you will need to do this before you can get to the plotting part. In the tree module of the sklearn library, there's a function called export underscore GraphWiz, as you can see here, which helps us to export the train tree. Let's have a look at the parameters of this function. First of all, we have to pass the model name, which is dt underscore model. Then the out underscore file parameter specifies the name of the output file. This function returns the image in dot format. And that's why I have set tree dot dot here. Then the feature underscore names defines the names of the features of variables. So we've passed x underscore train dot columns here, which returns the names of the columns. Max underscore depth defines the maximum depth of the representation. Don't confuse it with the max depth of decision tree model. In this instance, max depth would only print the decision tree till the specified depth. However, the model will be trained on the depth that we have specified while training the model. Very important to note this difference. And filled is equal to true will paint nodes to indicate majority class for classification. Don't worry, we'll see that shortly. I'm going to go ahead and run this. All right. As the above function returned the image in dot format, we need to convert it to a readable format. So in our instance, we'll say the PNG format. This command will convert the image to the PNG format and save it right into our current directory. Alright, so let me read this image and plot it here. As we specified the max depth is 2, the tree only till the depth of 2 has been printed. You can increase the depth as well to plot deeper trees. So let me just take the max depth here in as 3 and show you the difference. So we'll run this again and here we go. See the max depth is now 3. Alright. So in our tree, the first split here was based on whether the passenger is male or not. The genie for this split is 0 0.473 and there are a total of 668 samples. After the first split, there are 247 samples in the first node. That is, there are 247 females and 421 males. Then the node on the left 
is further split based on the P class. As you can see here, P class underscore 3. And the right node is split on the fair. This is how you can interpret the decision tree. There are tons of applications of decision trees. It ranges from fraud detection, credit risk, loan default, employee attrition, customer churn, to regression problems like predicting sales of a retail outlet or frankly any other business, the number of bikes rented, etc. There are so many applications of decision trees. So in this module, we learned what a decision tree is, what pure and impure nodes are. We learned different terminologies related to decision tree like the root node, leaf node, branches and much more. We then discussed how to select the best split point in decision trees and so different algorithms like Gini impurity, chi-square, reduction in variance, information gain. Then we saw how we can optimize the performance of a decision tree. And finally, in this video, we implemented decision tree algorithm in Python and saw how to plot a decision tree. A really fascinating and interesting module. Thank you. Thank you.